Hello, everyone. Today we're reading Luke chapter 20, verses 1 through 19. Jesus tells us a parable beginning at verse 9, but it directly relates to the events that preceded. So it's going to make a whole lot more sense when we, when we put it into context. The chapter starts off with Jesus teaching in the temple in Jerusalem. And then the lead priests, the teachers, and the elders show up to challenge Jesus' authority. They demanded, by what authority are you doing these things? Who gave you the right? Now, in my mind, there are two reasons to question someone's authority. The first is that you are genuinely wanting to confirm that the speaker has the credentials or experience to support their teachings, that, that they're not getting away with trying to sell you a crazy sounding story. But then there's another reason. And the second reason is that, is that they don't like what they're hearing and they just want to find a way to discredit the speaker so that they can be forced to stop listening to them. And you can guess which camp the lead priests, the teachers, and the elders are in. Jesus, of course, knows their motivation. Now, oftentimes, that the questions that, that they would throw at Jesus were trick questions that they hoped would, would trip Jesus up and discredit him. So Jesus decides to take advantage of the opportunity. Turnabout's fair play, he figures. So he hits them with a trick question first. And as we read, you'll see that, that they realize that they're trapped, so they decline to answer Jesus' question. And this sets the stage for Jesus to tell the parable. It goes like this. Now Jesus turned to the people again and told them this story. A man planted a vineyard, leased it to tenant farmers, and moved to another country to live for several years. At the time of the grape harvest, he sent one of his servants to collect his share of the crop, but the farmers attacked the servant, beat him up, and sent him back empty-handed. The story continues with other servants attempting to contact the tenant farmers with the same results. The owner then tries a new approach. What will I do? The owner asks himself. I know. I'll send my cherished son. Surely they will respect him. We know that this ends badly for the son and brings down the wrath of the owner. Now, most of Jesus' parables leave us trying to figure something out. But this parable is blatant. Jesus is clearly rebuking the lead priests, the teachers, and the elders, relating them to the tenant farmers that are abusing the privilege that they have of working the owner's vineyard. In many ways, like the tenant farmers, we, the followers of Jesus, also have the privilege of working in the Father's vineyard. We get to be a part of God's harvest. The work we do must always be for God's glory and never ours. When we participate in mission work or, or other forms of outreach, the temptation sometimes is to take credit, to receive the praise. If we're not careful, what starts off as an opportunity to glorify God by serving others can subtly shift into an exercise of self-promotion. When that happens, we become like the tenant farmers, and we become like the lead priests of Jesus' day. As we reflect on today's reading, I pray that we would search our souls for a moment and look inside us to see when we have tried to take the place of the owner, attempting to intercept his harvest. As we confess that, may we also celebrate that the Son has come to help us all to share in the harvest. As followers of Jesus, we have the joy of participating in the amazing work that the Holy Spirit is performing every day. It is a privilege to, to, to serve God under the authority of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Have a great day, everyone. If these devotional videos are helpful to you, Subscribe to our channel and click the notification button so you know when we post a new video. And of course, please share them with others.